a steam plant using a Castle Steam Boiler Part 6, modifying the engine's base and finishing the condenser. And in this episode, I put my hand up and say, yes, I forgot all about the rubber feet on the base of the engine. So now I'm taking them off. And as I'm doing this, I see another problem. There are two screws that stick out below the engine's base. This is going to be a problem when I mount the engine on the main baseboard. These screws are specially made, they're not commercial items. They are very long, go all the way through the baseboard and hold the handrail parts in place. Here's a clear image of the holes in the base of the engine. The bottom one is offset to the left, but I have a quick fix. All I'm going to do is use a countersink in my electric drill. And even though the hole at the bottom is very off-center, I managed to countersink it successfully because the point of the countersink follows the hole. It doesn't look particularly pretty, but it's the only way out of this problem. And it is, after all, underneath the baseboard and fully out of sight. I cleaned off the burrs on the countersunk holes and the holes from the rubber feet. And when I sit the engine the right way up again, it's a perfect fit on my workbench. Because I neglected to notice these rubber feet, and I don't know how I did that. The base of the engine is now a quarter of an inch lower than it was to start with relative to the bench. I'm sure that most viewers will have already guessed that there is now a problem. The exhaust inlet fitting on the condenser no longer lines up with the outlet pipe on the engine's base. Oh no, what am I going to do now? Shock horror, it's not lining up. I've removed a quarter of an inch from the baseboard by removing the rubber feet. Now I need to drop the height of the condenser by cutting the plates on the end of it. And I also need to add a small amount to take into consideration the brass angle that I'm going to solder on the end of each of the feet. Should I solder the two pieces of brass angle like this? No, that looks horrible. I need to turn them round and solder them the other way. The problem is they no longer fit anymore because the tube is too low down relative to the end plates. I need to cut out part of the angle so the tube fits onto it. How do I do this? Do I set it up on a horizontal milling machine and use a one and a quarter inch diameter cutter? Or do I set up a fly cutter to one and a quarter inches? Or maybe just drill lots of small holes around the line and then file it to the shape that I require? In the end, I found a really simple way of doing it. I mark the centre and starting from the centre, holding the piece of brass angle in a pair of pliers, I just used the end of my belt sander to grind away the metal that I wanted to remove. It's simple and quick, doesn't require a great deal of skill and it's very simple to just follow the line and grind away the metal that I don't need. If I'm honest, I took away a little bit more metal than I should have done, but it will be fine because this is not a precision part. I'm just going to solder it onto this bit. Before I soldered the brass angle to the condenser, I drilled two holes in each of them. This will allow me to bolt the condenser to the main baseboard, which hopefully should be arriving today. Time now to turn my attention to the drain tap. I need to solder a pipe into this, 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, and here you see me drilling a hole in the steam tap to accept the pipe. I cleared all of the swarf out of the tap, and then I soft soldered a piece of 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter copper pipe into the base of the tap. This piece of pipe reaches all the way down to the bottom of the condenser and is used for draining the condensate. Here I'm using a shim washer to make sure that the tap's outlet is in the correct position. Here's a shot of the finished condenser. All I need to do now is clean up all of the parts of the condenser ready for painting with etch primer. I used a new piece of Scotch-Brite for this. It's more than adequate and it scratches the metal perfectly to key it for the paint. At this point, I thought it would be a good idea to remove the stainless steel ball from the check valve. I need to remove the brass plug before I paint it anyway. This is the stainless steel ball just before I put it into my box of stainless steel balls. I was going to remove the paint from the check valve, but because it got very hot during the soldering process, the paint is really baked on. So I gave it a rub down with the Scotch Brite and I'm going to leave it like this and paint it. And if the paint suddenly gets removed by the etch primer, I'll know that I do need to remove the paint. But it feels okay. I'm going to give it a bit more of a rub down with the Scotch Brite just to flatten off any of the chipped paint. For painting, I've also fitted a union nut to the threads. 
and similarly I left the union nut in place on the other fitting. Now it's time to wander through into the outer part of the workshop by a wide open door and spray the condenser using a tin of self-etch primer. I've mentioned it before, but one more time won't harm. The idea of using self-etch primer on many parts is the fact that it contains an acid that etches into the metal. I use it on most metals, but it's particularly useful on copper and brass, which can be reluctant to take paint. I intend to paint this condenser exactly the same colour as the paintwork on the engine. And the paint is Hammerite Smooth Right Dark Green, the same colour as used on my Lion locomotive. Here's a gratuitous shot of the paint drying, and that's it for this one. Stay safe and well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.